Well, it's Halloween, and this is a perfect time to discuss something really cool that's happening in our sky someday very soon. And I have an expert here from NASA, Dr. Bill Cook. Bill, you're going to talk to me about like a zombie star or something crazy that happens, maybe a resurrecting star. Let's talk about this. Okay, well, sometime soon, a binary star system called T Corona Borealis will go nova. And this system has two stars in it, a red giant and a white dwarf. And both of these stars are nearing the end of their lives. Really interesting. And with, with those stars, the difference between a white dwarf and a red giant, for those of you that don't know, there are some big differences between those two stars. Yes, the red giant is kind of a star much bigger than the sun. And it, of course, it has a red color. And the white dwarf is a star about the size of the Earth, so very much smaller than the sun. How do they interact? What's going to happen? Well, what's happening is they're close enough together that stuff from that red giant is, you know, spiraling in and landing on the surface of that white dwarf. And when enough stuff gets accumulated on the surface of the white dwarf, you'll get a thermonuclear runaway and that surface will literally explode, causing the brightness of the system to increase greatly. And That's, a new star will appear in our sky when that happens. That is amazing. OK, so we're going to talk about this. This thing is not super, super close to us. I mean, I guess it's kind of in our stellar neighborhood here. But I mean, how far away is this event happening? 3,000 light years. 3,000 so light years. When, that means when that star goes nova, it took like 3,000 years to get here. So that if it goes nova now, that means that star went nova in 1,000 B.C. and it, the light is just now reaching us. That is amazing. Now, it's just the surface that explodes. So this cycle actually repeats itself, right? That white dwarf is so dense it's going to draw more stuff over from the red giant. Is that right? Right. Uh, this nova happens once every 80 years. It last happened in 1946. And after it explodes this time, it'll keep drawing stuff from that red giant. And in another 80 years, it'll happen again. So wild. Now, you think back, OK, and when you think back to the last time this happened, roughly 80 years ago, we didn't have nearly the equipment that we have now to monitor this stuff. What's NASA doing to keep tabs on this? How is this event going to be watched and observed? And what can we learn from it? Well, uh, there are a lot of observers on the ground watching it using telescopes. I'm observing it just because I want to see it and see it when it blows its top. We'll have satellites in space. X-ray satellites and other instruments will be pointed that direction to keep an eye on it. And you're right. We will learn a lot more about this NOVA than we did back in 1946. It will really help us understand what, how these systems evolve. Now, one of the questions that came to my mind as I was doing a little bit of research on this is, how long will this NOVA be visible? I mean, is this something that you're trying to catch the flash? Is it a slower development? I once saw a star flash in the sky and go, all right? Just happened to be a weird timing thing. But how do you know when something like this is going to happen? And how long of an event will this be? Well, the honest truth is we it happens roughly once every eight years, but we can't time this precisely. So we're kind of waiting and when it does go, it'll be visible for about a week. And that's the most important thing. If you want to see an exploding star, you'll have about a week to see it with your eyes before it requires a telescope again. So you got to pay attention to the news and go outside and see it. Yeah. So when it happens, we'll be able to share it with all of our viewers and they'll know how to see it now. We take a look at this this dual star system and you've got the red giant, the white dwarf. You know, these, I guess, at some point were pretty comparable to our own sun in size. Is this something that eventually is going to happen uh, with our sun? And about how far down the road does NASA think something like this? I, I know with the sun maybe becoming a red giant. How, how many years do we have here with our sun? Well, the sun will eventually become red giant, but that's not for billions of years. 
So uh, a pretty long way down the road. Of course, our star will never go nova because we're not part of a binary star system. So while the sun will go red giant, it won't go nova. Okay. And while you're here, I mean, I love having this great information. Talk to me about the difference. You know, we hear about nova, but then there's also a supernova. What's the difference? What, what happens? Well, in a nova, it requires a binary star system and it doesn't destroy the stars. So, you know, this white dwarf, it'll blow off a part of its surface, but it'll be normal otherwise, and in 80 years, it'll repeat. In a supernova, you have a massive star that just reaches the end of its life, and it collapses upon itself. And when that happens, you get this enormous explosion that literally blows the star to bits. All that's left is a neutron star or a black hole. So in the case of a supernova, it literally destroys the star and you have this neutron star or black hole remnant. Whereas in a nova, things are kind of go back to normal after the nova explosion. That's so wild. Now, with the nova exploding, what comes off that white dwarf? What, how far does that extend? Like, does that impact other planetary bodies or other items around there? Do they get eaten up by that explosion? Or do we know if there's anything even that close to those things? Well, I would not want to be on a planet in the T Corona Borealis system right now. I can tell you that. So, uh, yes, when the white dwarf explodes and blows off, that matter goes out into space. And over time, it will form a faint nebula around it. You've seen the pictures of nebulae on the Internet and other places. So there will be a faint cloud of gas around it. And we will be able to measure how fast that gas is expanding over time. That'll be another thing we'll be looking for, how much material this thing kicks up. This is so wild. So we have a white dwarf that's kind of vampiring or sucking away from a red giant. And we're seeing a star that's basically getting resurrected or becoming a zombie. However you want to term it, it all ties in beautifully with Halloween. And we thank you, Dr. Cook, for taking some time to explain all this. We'll look forward to updates and we'll look forward to the big event. Uh, thank you for having me.